ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥಾಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸನ ಕೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದತ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವತ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತೇ ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಿಶಾಲ ಬುದ್ಧೆ ಹುಲ್ಲಾರವಿಂದಾಯತ ಪತ್ರ ನೇತ್ರ ಯೇನ ತ್ವಯ ಭಾರತ ತೈಲ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ವಾಲಿತೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಪ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ವೇತ್ರೈಕ ಪಾಣೇ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಗೀತಾಮೃತದುಹೇ ನಮಃ ವಸುದೇ ವಸುತ ದೇವ ಕಂಸ ಚಾನೂರ ಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕಿ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಸರ್ವರ್ಮನ್ ಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಮಾಮೇಕಂ ಶರಣ ವ್ರಜ ಅಹಂ ತ್ವಾಪೇಭ್ಯ ಮೋಕ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾ ಶುಚ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಅ ಬಿಟ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ but let's come directly to our reflection time and uh, i know we've been talking about really high level uh, things before but today i want to um uh, ask you what do you think are our worries and stresses today i know we are all at a different um um a stage of our lives the worries and stresses that we are going through may be different than what our children are going through what maybe in the case of some of us whose grandchildren may be older what they are going through so it may be very different but what do you think is our worries and stresses you know geeta is thinking our life is so peaceful you know there is really nothing to worry me or stress me today except if my flights are going to take off for my trips i don't know <laughs> thanks i was seriously thinking what i should say <laughs> you know each one of us have our own because, uh, because you said about grandkids it's uh-huh. their problem. it's not of my problem i leave it to them it's their worry are you really really sure are you really I don't know that? Uh, out of sight out of mind mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. everything is going well we we might say that right <laughs> what you sure think? others have something to share i'm uh-huh. sure hari om um, uh, this is like uh, the first sentence that each one being in different uh, stages of life have different things that are bothering them so i i i don't know if we can you know 
put them and we can just say them as worries and stress, but I don't think we can bring it into a one uh, generalized compartment saying that this is what is, which is going to be same for everyone except the word, the worries and stress and uh, causing uh, health issues. It's other than that, I don't think we can actually bring, I think that is what I think is like, Everyone is at a different uh, stage of life. So there'll be different things bothering each one of us. So I think that is uh, what I think about it. Uh-huh. And so ultimately uh, the future. Oh, sorry. Sona. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I there are some things. Yeah, some things in a very general sense is common for everybody, right? Like you said, health. Then health, uh, roof on a head, which of course, when we say roof, it's just symbolic. Really, you know, is my roof leaking? Leaking. That's what I mean. You know, is my roof, you know, 15 years, is it over for my roof? Is it time to change it? Uh, that can be a worry and stress. So anything connected with housing, right? And then connected with food. You know, am I eating too much of this uh, junk food? Am I, uh, uh, I mean, these are simple things, but yet they do cause a little bit of a worry. I mean, um, is my weight increasing? Who knows, right? So, because of all this food. But Madhuri, you had some more specific things to say. No, I was just saying always the future. We worry about future, what's going to happen. Right, right. <laughs> that is very true. Very true. Because very true, very true. So, uh, the future, but even if you take the future, what is it about the future that is worrying us? Is it near future or long future, later future or one week from today future or whatever? You know, there are so many futures. Mm -hmm. So, the point though is that I don't think we can deny that uh, we do not have worries or stresses. Otherwise, we will be living in a bubble. You know, um, yes, some things are going well. There is, of course, you know, I don't have any mosquitoes. I don't have all the things that maybe that I'm going through here. You, know, you don't have any of that. That is true. But there may be some other things, you know. Uh, what about the deer which shows up in my backyard, which is eating my plants? Or, you know, they are small things, we may say, but... I mean, pretty soon, you, you're out of your winter season, of course. But the point is, <clears throat> the reason why I'm again bringing this up is really the need for spirituality in our lives. Um, everybody has worries and stresses. Our youngsters has even more oh, so yeah. worries and stresses, which they feel that they can do it on their own. They can um, really solve it on their own. But especially for them, this shloka that we did last time very elaborately is very, very important. And in this regard, you know, we talked about, um, so that, that's why I put this picture of really, you know, if you think our backs are bent right now, of course, it's because of sitting too much in front of the computer and seeing the screen and go looking down and looking at my phone. That is one reason. But there is psychologically, we have this big load of things and it may be not a bad idea for us to actually write down really what are all the things that are stressing me today. The reason I say this is after I explain why this Vahami Aham and not the Dhami Aham, I'll, um, I'll explain to you how so many of this, just like, you know, we outsource things out we can actually, we have an opportunity to completely outsource all this to somebody who will take care of it absolutely free of cost, you know? So that is why this shloka is so very important that uh, we discussed last time. So uh, I think two classes ago, we discussed a story about this one wonderful, um, a great Brahmin um, um, scholar, okay? So this great Brahmin scholar was, uh, you know, going through writing, he was writing commentaries on Mahabharata, <clears throat> you know, 
And when he was doing the commentary on Mahabharata, when he came to Bhagavad Gita, uh, and when he came to this particular shloka, which is Ananyas Chintayan Tomam Ye Jana Paryupasate, you know, the shloka, Ye Ananyas Chintayan Tomam Ye Jana Paryupasate, Tesham Nitya Yuktanam Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. Vaham Yaham, which is Vahami Aham. When he came to this, he said, you know, uh, I mean, the meaning, of course, we did last time. It says clearly, it says that Krishna is saying, you know, just leave everything to me. I will carry it. Okay. I will, yeah, Bahami, I will carry the whole thing. So this uh, priest, uh, this uh, scholar thought about it and he said, you know, how can it be that he's carrying, he's after all the Lord of the universe, you know, um, uh, doesn't he have much better things to do than carry my uh, my burden, you know? So he just scratched it and he put dadami aha. Okay? Dadami means I give. I give you yoga and kshema. Okay? So this verse here, it says yoga and kshema, you know, I will carry it for you. And that's what uh, Krishna is saying, right? But he said, you know, I will give you yoga and kshema. Okay. So he says, you know, Lord Krishna cannot do this. He is just too busy with things. He's too big. Bhagwan, how can Bhagwan do all this? You know. So he writes that and then he goes to take his bath. And in the meantime, but, you know, his family is very poor. I mean, those days, uh, people who are in that profession, right? I mean, uh, scholars, they never ever thought about their own family or food or whatever. Somebody will come give money and then that's how they should live. So this family was very poor. He did not have any of this uh, food or anything at home. So then while he uh, either went for his bath or went out or something, um, one young boy comes in and carrying a big load of rations and vegetables and everything and gives it to the wife, you know. And she just accepts, and she asks him, you know, how come, how did you, uh, I mean, who sent you? He said, no, your husband only sent me. Uh, this is all the food for it. So she's very happy and everything. But then while going back, you know, when she, after he's uh, given this, she notices a big scratch on his back, you know, a big scratch and like red in red. And she asks him, you know, but uh, what happened to you? How did this happen? She said, well, uh, he says, well, your husband did this to me, you know. So when the husband came back and she, you know, she tells him excitedly, you know what, um, there was a young boy, you sent this young boy um, uh, with the food and everything. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I accepted it, but she, he told me that you did the, you scratched his back. And then immediately uh, the scholar realized that he had scratched that thing and you know yeah, and put dadami instead of bahami. So Krishna wants to say that you know it's not that I give you but I will carry you the burden. It's I will carry the burden for you. So don't I, I meant when I said that I am carrying the burden. And this is just so powerful I think you know this word carrying it's uh, literally gives you that complete solace, complete co confidence in God, you know, saying that he is there to carry all my worries and stresses. So this is why I thought, you know, we should make a list of everything that is bothering me and uh, is worrying me. And, uh, Am I really giving everything to the Lord? What is it that I'm carrying upon myself? You know, just to make a list of that and do it. Any uh, thoughts or any questions? Hari Om, uh, this picture, uh, I did, uh, this was something that the whole week I was pondering about it, that what all we carry and we think that, you know, uh, it's, mm -hmm. but, uh, sadly enough, I couldn't, I'm still carrying it. I have this whole thing uh, going on that I'm so great. I can carry everything, but I'm not being able to carry and not being able to give it to the Lord. 
<laughs> but uh, this picture and everything that you said about this uh, from the last class that has been going around in my head that I have to give it to the Lord. That is something that stuck in my head, but did not succeed in doing that. Just uh, ended up. Uh, uh -huh. But this is something uh, for reflection. This is something that it was a takeaway for me. Yes, it is just so beautiful because any point in time when I'm worried about what's going to happen, I just say, Krishna, you take care of it. You take care of it. You know, and he will just take it out of our hands and say, you know, uh, so we, that is the whole point about what he's trying to say here. You know, Ananyas Chinteyantumam, ye jana paryupasa, those who worship me alone. And here this word me is also very, very important. It is not a partial thing. It's like, okay, Krishna, when I'm not able to handle it, you take care of it. But small, small things, I'm okay. I'll take care of this. You know, let me reserve you only for the big things. So let me, you know, it's not like that. It's like 100%. 100% I have to be able to give it to him. But again, that doesn't mean that, okay, I give everything to you now. I'm just going to go to the beach and relax. Okay. It's not that. What he's saying is, you know, Ananyas Chinti Ye Jana Par Upasade, those who worship, to those who are self controlled, I take care of the requirements. So these people are people who are actually working. They are working, they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. But they're doing it with the idea that. I'm only doing your seva. Okay. I'm not doing this for myself. Everything here is just you and you alone everywhere. And everything that I do is only for you. So having that complete thought, when I do that, you know, that is, and when I do that, then he carries the burden of what is coming to me and he just takes care of that. Now, that doesn't mean that, okay, I okay I do my work, but Krishna, then I'm telling you, I need this million dollars. Just give me this million dollars. No, that is not, again, what he's saying. He knows exactly what I deserve at that moment in time. All he's saying is that I will make sure that you will get what you deserve. I'm not going to cheat you, you know? Or if you allow, so if I have some other boss, right? Now there is always this chance that that boss may have a big super ego, whatever, may or do things for his purpose or whatever. And I may not get what I'm supposed to get. But here Krishna is saying, you know what? You do fully what your work is. I will completely ensure that you will get what you completely deserve. Okay. So Ananya, Ananya, which we said last time, it is completely, there is not even a little bit that is, uh, I'm not thinking about something else. In, in and through everything, I feel that I'm doing it only for you. You know, it is that Lord in the, in the form of the person who's cleaning my house here, uh, cleaning my office here. It is in the, uh, you know, the person, um, in, of course, uh, in my boss, it is the, per, you know, the ground I'm treading, the food that I'm eating, everything is nothing but him and him alone, you know. So seeing that divinity really helps us to look at the whole world with a different set of glasses, right? So this is just... Explain. Yeah, go ahead. Uh yeah, in the same lines, uh, you know, when we think of uh, Pralada and mm -hmm. Ambarisha, mm -hmm. uh, they they stand for examples where they, uh, you know, they worshipped God and then, you know, uh, they, they completely, Correct. that, uh, you know, whatever happened to Pralada, like, you know, whatever his dad, uh, uh, Spa was doing, nothing happened. And at every moment, uh, you know, he was being saved by, uh, you know, Vishnu. Mm -hmm. And same for uh, Ambarisha. Right. Uh, you know, uh, right. Uh, Durvasa, uh, Rishi gets angry. 
uh, and there you know but uh, so he didn't do anything intentional so nothing happens to ambarisha mm-hmm. so i mean uh, it's like you know the undivided uh, or you know the complete bhakti correct you know they stand for the examples and then which i think uh, we have to learn from them that's right undivided unconditional right yeah so that is the ananyas chintayantu mam you are completely surrendering in in and through everything every act everything that i'm doing i look at just pure god there and it's pure love actually it's completely with pure love when i approach anything and everything i do then this whole thing of yoga and kshema which we talked about last time they are basically nothing but two technical terms our whole life is gone only on acquiring and acquiring whatever i don't have i want to acquire and whatever now that i've acquired i want to make sure that it is maintained well you know just like how in us i mean in michigan we buy these houses but once we buy it it's not as if even if you i mean i remember the first time when you buy a house we always buy a second hand house or something right and uh, we always go with a little bit of a trepidation that we want a house which is less than 5 years old or less than 10 years because we know that in 5 or 7 years the roof starts to uh, you know another 5 years after the roof and so many things you have to keep changing so then what do you do you you think okay i'm going to buy a brand new house i'm going to build it from the scratch but even if you build a brand new house you still have to maintain it whether it is the plumber's problem or whether anything you know all these things so if we think about again if you make a list of all the actions we are doing they are nothing but acquiring first and then maintaining now these are the two major things is what krishna is saying i will take care of you i will come in the form of a plumber and help you i'll come in the form of this you know just don't get worried that nothing is going to happen so we saw all this and finally uh, i think we did all this i just wanted to give that yoga and kshema and part of it is really so beautiful you know so then you know uh, the idea which he gives lord krishna is at the end of the day think of me alone in the form of that infinite potential you know i'm so big so big that you cannot even imagine how big i am you know but then the question may arise so does that mean that i have to absolutely know krishna in his infinite form only then will i get this benefit is that the thing so here he says that no not really even if you or even if you pray to any of the uh, forms of gods you know the finite gods whether it's lord venkateshwara lord narayana you know shiva uh, uh, ganesha even then it's okay you know you can you will still your is in a sense you're only praying to me you know but you should have that bhava so the right knowledge is that i am praying to that ishvara in his infinite nature you know it's like for example um i know that the knowledge is available for us through internet in this phone you know and it doesn't matter i may be accessing that internet uh, that internet is available it's all available but i need a particular device to connect to it i can do it through the computer or i can do it through the phone but what i'm trying to access at the end of the day is that infinite amount of knowledge that is available so i need to have that kind of a bhavam when i uh, access it okay so that's why here in the shloka in 23 he said ye ye pyan anya devata bhakta yajante shraddhayan vitaha te pi ma me vakante ye yajanta vidhi purvakam so here he says even those devotees of other gods endowed with faith in them who worship them in truth me alone so in a sense they are coming to me alone but they are uh, the method that they are using okay the uh, avidhi purvakam he saying you know so this word is very important because 
in the next shloka, you know, he'll talk about what exactly the so vidhi, vidhi means uh like in the Vedas, right? In the Vedas, you have a lot of do's and don'ts, you know. Uh, you have to do it in a certain way, uh, a particular ritual, if it is for Surya Devata, you know, when do you do it? When compared to and then for Shiva, you know, you have all this. So that is all it means viti. So a viti purvakam means sometimes. Uh, people may use a different method, you know, to pray to the same God. And like I said, he will come to it exactly in uh, the next shloka when he explains what it means here. But the point is that if I pray to uh, like, you know, Ganesha or I pray to Krishna, but with the idea that I'm actually accessing that infinite Lord, then my prayers are going to the same place. Okay. What does misguided method mean? Miss, that's what we'll come to in the next. Uh, oh, next okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, well, maybe I'll just give a simple example, you know, like, um, um, and maybe it's an Indian example, but you can also um, see if this works in the West. In the sense, you know, uh, I need um, a new telephone connection. Actually, you know, that also I cannot use because nowadays you have private telephone companies, right? Um, maybe I need um, I need a permit to build something in my house. Okay. So what do I do? I go to the uh, uh, civic center or something, you know, like I think about Nova Civic Center to apply for the permit. And I I have complete faith uh, or I, I have this complete thing that only the person in the civic center is going to help me do it or whatever. So I take him out for lunch or something to get my work done. So that is the misguided means. Okay. Bribing. So, bribing. Bribing. Exactly. Bribing. Okay, maybe I'll use an example, which uh, again, it happens a lot in India. Like, for example, if I go to one of the largest temples in India, you know, and I say that, okay, I'm going to, uh, or this happens with Ganesha temples, right? You know, I'm going to break this coconut for you now. And if, I, uh, if okay, maybe this is a very good example. I mean, right now, there are two major things that are happening for which people use misguided means to go to the temples. Number one, uh, exams are happening. Okay. So kids will go to the temples or parents will go to the temples to break coconuts, uh, uh, thinking that if they break the coconuts, they're going to be able to access it. Second biggest thing which is happening is elections are just around the corner. Next week on, uh, Tamil Nadu is going to have uh, doing the voting and the week after Kerala and all that. Where are the politicians going? First, they go to the temples or the places of worship. So these are the misguided means that we are talking about. Okay. Nothing really wrong with that. But I mean, again, depending on, because when I say nothing really wrong, what I mean by it, at the end of the day, the money goes to the temple, the temple goes bigger, and that will help some other people who are more sincere bhaktas, right? In different ways, I mean, even simple thing is children, you know, they really want something from the father, but they know they cannot access the father, but they'll go to the mother, and the mother will then, you know, uh, forward the case to the father or something like that, you know. <laughs> So that is so that's why this avidhi purvakam is a very important uh, word that Krishna is cautioning. So you see, I mean, Bhagavad Gita, even though it is such an old text, okay, uh, the words that have been chosen there is really applicable for so many different uh, ages to come because it can really. Uh, you can use the words to really explain every um, every fallacy that can happen, you know. So then in Shloka... Sometimes, uh, yeah. um, we write Sri Ram Jam, I'll write thousand times, do this for me, or something like that. It's also bribing God. I'm not bribing, I'm not using the right word. It's like asking something from God. I'll do this, do this for me, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of 
does this mean that same word is that the same thing connected to what is that word the previous no. sloka yeah abhiti purvakam you mean uh, abhiti purvakam yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no so so what uh, Krishna is saying is, you know, okay, you write a uh, thousand times Sri Ram Jayam. Krishna mm -hmm. will say that if you do it, if you're offering your prayer sincerely and that is what you want, and which again is coming up in the next shloka, you know, um, in uh, maybe 25th shloka actually, uh, he will say that uh, if that is what you want, you know what, Gita, I'll give it to you. Okay. And now what you will think is, oh, wow, Krishna is so generous to me. You know, he's helping me. Maybe I'll ask more of the same thing. So we keep on asking the same thing, you know, again and again and again. So that is where we are kind of misguided. In the beginning, he says, okay, I'll give it to you. But now look at me differently. Look at me not in just the form and falling in love with just my form, but I'm even beyond that. Try to, so this is again the different steps in reaching him. First, I look at Krishna as somebody who is out there, who is like a role model who will do whatever I want. Then I, Krishna is saying, you know, you can come even closer to me. You can become part of me. And then finally he says, you are none other than me, you know. So come all the way is what he's trying to say. Don't just stop in one thing and... Uh, get hung up in that method, you know. So every method of worship, like even this uh, writing is actually a very good thing because it keeps my mind focused, okay. But then I also have to keep at the back of my mind, really, who is that ultimate Lord? Of course, it builds a lot of uh, feelings within me, the feeling of surrender is there, the feeling of love, all that is there. But at some point in time, my ego has to be shattered. So, now, Can I ask another question? Yes. In the beginning, we say, Lord says, surrender to me. Just leave it to me, I will take care of you. So, um, by writing Sri Ram Jayam and saying, Lord, help me out. Okay, so Lord is helping. In that way, also, we are surrendering to God, right? In other words, we are but with expectation, maybe we are doing it with expectation. Because Correct. I did it, do that for me. Something like that. It comes. Correct. Correct. Uh, there is a difference. I think there is a difference between both. Yes. Mm, yes, there I, is definitely a difference. But um, mm -hmm. it is, I mean, we are all, you know, Pratak Balaha, there is one number. You know, we are all children when it comes to that point. We are immature at some point. Slowly mm -hmm. we gain the maturity. And we recognize that what I'm doing is not for the sake of getting something. Okay. Yeah, correct. In fact, uh, in the shloka, which to the last shloka of the series, you know, it's just, uh, I guess I won't say it now, but when you come there, that just the thought that is explained is so beautiful, you know, about um, that giving part of it. Uh, I know in this part, in this, we're talking actually about taking, you know, I'm taking something from God, but mm. there is somewhere along the way that taking has to come to a form of giving. Um, and there is one more step, which he explains in, I think in 28. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, in uh, another chapter, uh, Bhagavan says, uh, you know, Artho Jijnasu Ardhasu Jnani So Bhartasu. Yeah. So like the, the, the kinds of, of people who, four type of bhaktas. So who worship him. So and uh, sometimes can be transition. You know, they start somewhere and then they go all the way. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's right. That's that. Correct, correct. You're right. So the four types of devotees, uh, some people uh, love God only if he gives them something. That is the Artha people, right? Then the Jignasa, they go for the knowledge. Then ultimately, the yogis, I think, they are completely merged with him. Yeah. So here, uh, again, this extension, you know, of this thing where he's saying, Aham hi sarva jnana bhokta cha prabhu natumam abhi jananti 
tatve na tashya vantite. You know, he says, uh, people don't realize that at the end of the day, I alone am their enjoyer and the Lord. You know, aham bhokta cha prabhu eva cha. But people do not know me in that sense. And hence they are chavanti. You know, they fall. What, what does it mean by fall is basically they keep coming back to enjoying the same desires again and again and again. You know, the same uh, thought, even just a few shloka before we came to, you know, uh, what is that? Gata Agatam, you know. Um, and even in uh, chapter 2, we had this Nanusho uh, Chanti Pandita. Oh, no. What is that? Uh, in shloka, I think, level 2, 11, I think. Right? Um, wait one second. I, I have to look up now. Suddenly, my mind is blank. But then the point about it is... Uh, People keep coming and going all the time, mainly because, yeah, gata, gata suna gata sumscha, you know, uh, in chapter 2, 11, you know, people keep coming, but this is about the living and the dead, people who have gone and people who have not yet gone. But here, in this case, here he is trying to say that we tend to keep coming back into the world or we keep doing the same things again and again and again for the sake of something. And that is what he calls this as a fall, you know. We are constantly experiencing the joy and the sorrow and everything. So then in 25, he uh, he explains to Gita's point, you know, with the earlier thing, what you said about uh, people going to the temples for certain things. So, uh, in many cases, you know, we take things for granted. For example, if I want a certain uh, loan or something like that, you know, I go to worship, uh, I go to a loan officer or if I want a job or an admission uh, for, uh, again, this is admission time as well. For many things, you know, there's so many things. You, We tend to go to higher authorities for something or the other. And we kind of sort of limit our desires in some sense, and we also limit the person to whom I'm asking something. Uh, many times, you know, when people say that, um, uh, what, uh, or I think there is a say, uh, be careful what you wish for, you may just get it, you know, when people say this thing, right? It's a very common American expression. We say, oh, but what's wrong with me? not getting what I really wished for, correct? But what uh, Krishna is saying is, you really don't know what you can wish for, okay? So if you come to me, I will give you much, much more than what you thought you were capable of, you know? You might be just asking for one room house or something, but guess what? I'm going to give you a seven bedroom house, Okay, uh, because that is what you deserve. Okay, so we don't know that. So that is what in this shloka, you know, beautifully he says, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, Pitran Yanti Pitra Vrataha, Bhutani Yanti Bhute Jaha, Yanti Madhya Jinopi Ma. Okay, so. Basically, worshippers of other gods, you know, like, um, again, using this example, what uh, Gita said, you know, if I'm writing Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, only for a particular thing, okay, he says, you know, Yanti Deva Pratap, so worshippers, they, they go to them, to those people. There may be some other people, Pitrun Yanti Pitra Vrataha. So this is about, you know, so uh, Pitralokas. Pitralokas, people who have gone, you know, before us, our ancestors, okay? There may be some of us who may want to visit those places which our previous uh, generation have gone because we feel that those people did so much of Punya, you know, they are at a much higher level like, for example, uh, I mean, think about this, right? How many of you would 
I know artificial intelligence is really, really out there now. And chat GPT is out there. There are so many things. I mean, I don't know. Now I'm getting a lot of, I don't know if you all are getting, but I'm getting a lot of these emails from a bank saying that be careful, be careful with your voice recognition. Somebody can call you and uh, fool you or whatever. All this is happening now. So let me ask you, how many of you would like to go um, forward and uh, be, uh, or you want to be in the generation, two generations from now, say where your grandchildren are growing up? I mean, what do you think? Would you rather go to that generation if you have a choice? Or would you rather go to a generation which was your grandfather's generation or your great-grandfather or before? With respect to? Anything. With res okay, with respect to knowledge. Let's say knowledge. Not, not with respect to wealth or whatever. Because we may say, you know what, maybe my great-grandfather was very poor. And I don't want to really go and live, uh, go to that kind of a life, you know? So, basically here, the ancestors, the word Pitra here refers to uh, people who had a lot of knowledge way before. And I really want, I aspire to go to that kind of a world, you know? So, that is what uh, he's trying to say. So, there may be people who may want to uh, go for that kind of knowledge and then, then what he says is, them, or there may be the third kind of people, Bhutani Yanti Bhute Jaha. So here he's trying to say is, people want to be in the company of those people who are uh, doing a lot of uh, scientific work, for example, scientific progress. You know, um, like for example, today, I mean, we would love to be in the company of people who are constantly discovering and making the world a better place. Okay? So it doesn't matter. What he's trying to show ultimately is whatever you want to do. So he's trying to say that whatever deities you are invoking, okay, you come to live in that kind of a world. So we all are here basically based upon whatever we wanted. Okay, so those who are invoking like the phenomenal forces and that is what the devatas are. Devatas are basically the phenomenal forces. Devatas, you know, we have devatas for each one of our uh, sense organs. You know, for uh, like um, Varuna is the devata for one organ and then Surya, all this. So whenever I am invoking those devatas, basically with my five sense organs, Whatever I can get in the world, that is one one way, uh, one one form of worship or to one one particular thing, uh, god gods, and then like I said, um, if I'm the kind of person who really likes being in the world, all that, so I will always keep coming back to only that kind of a life, is what he's trying to say. But then he says, but my worshippers they come to me alone. So he's trying to say that all these other people, they will keep coming back to their own life. So we are, you know, when I said we are the products of our past, um, we will con constantly be in that same cycle. And Krishna is saying, I will give you all this, no problem at all. Wherever you want to go, whether you want to keep coming back in, in the same world, or whether you want to go up to Pitriloka, but you still will have to come back to this world. And then whether you want to uh, enjoy the, uh, you know, whatever the sense organs can give you, doesn't matter, all that. But there is one more thing which he says, you know, but you can actually get out of this whole cycle, which is there in the first three uh, lines here. But if you come to me, that's it. That is your final moksha. That's your final liberation. You can just pray to me that way, you know. Any questions or any thoughts? Again, this is all part of this whole bhakti uh, part of it, right? Yeah, Anand, you had something to say? 
Harivam. Yeah, is it the same? Uh, of, uh, I mean, like saying, Kshine punye marcha lokam. Vishanti. So, yeah. so, I mean, after, you know, the punya is over, they're back. Come back. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then the birth and uh, death, the cycle continues. Correct. Exactly. Very nice, Anand. I'm glad you're connecting the shlokas to the previous ones immediately, you know. Uh, Thanks. Uh, all from your teachings. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, you you also, you, you enjoy it, which is nice. So now the question is, we have, uh, we have, uh, Krishna is ultimately trying to uh, put a case for why we should only think of him in the infinite form. Because in infinity, there is so much amount of infinite potential, right? Everything else, there is very limited potential. So he says, just ask for whatever you want. I will give you much more than what, uh, you know, whatever you think you, uh, you uh, want. Because you are, you do deserve a lot more. And you don't even know what you want, you know. So he says, because you, you don't know what you want, you just come to me. I'll just take care of you, you know. So now, if after explaining all this, you know, then uh, what is the attitude with which I have to approach him? Now that I know that I have to approach him, him, tell me, you know, what are the, what is, what kind of an attitude and what can I really uh, offer him? Okay, so we have really the, uh, some of the most famous shlokas of Bhagavad Gita, which is coming up in this section. And uh, in this uh, particular shloka number 26, you know, it's like um, uh, whenever we love somebody, right? Uh, Whenever we go to somebody's house or when I really, really love somebody, I want to give them something out of my heart. You know, I know now it is not Christmas time, but during Christmas time, especially, I think we make sure that, you know, there's a gift for everybody in the family or something like that. Right. Uh, but Krishna, what do I give Krishna who is when I pray to him, he is just giving me anything and everything. What do I give him? You know? That is the whole idea which this beautiful shloka is uh, about. Patram pushpam phalam toyam. Patram pushpam phalam toyam. Yo me bhaktya prayachati. Yo me bhaktya prayachati. Tadaham bhaktyu papritam. Tadaham bhaktyu bhaktyu. Ashnami prayatatmanaha. Ashnami prayatatmanaha. So, patram pushpam phalam toyam. So difficult to find in these days, right? Patram pushpam, just a leaf, just a flower, any flower. It doesn't even have to be one of those most beautiful a rose or uh, uh, what is that, uh, jasmine or whatever. It can be even a yellow flower, which is like a weed, which grows so much, you know. Palam, a fruit, toem, water. When offered to me with devotion, that is the whole point here. So it is not about what I'm offering, but it is with what attitude I'm offering. And that is when I'm offering with a complete devotion. Tat aham bhakti upahvrutam. Because of the bhakti, because of the devotion, that aham, you know, that aham ashnami prayatatmana. I accept wholeheartedly. You know, ashnami prayatatmana. Because you have given me with complete devotion, with complete, you know, with absolutely a pure heart. So I will accept that whole thing, whatever you're trying to give me. So literally, you know, we may think, you know, we are uh, impressing the Lord by giving him something, you know, a gold watch 
or uh, you know i don't know interestingly i think it was in um, whatsapp note one thing which i was just reading um about how 20 years ago or something 1 kg of gold you can get actually get a maruti car or something and now with 1 kg of gold uh what is that you can buy a plane or something you know they they were just joking about it how we tend to give so much of importance to gold and everything and so many you know we want to offer gold to god and everything but ultimately he says pure minded just offer your ego you know completely offer your surrender your ego to me and all these things patram pushpam phalam toyam they are all nothing but um they are uh, just uh what just a, a sign of my devotion you know um if even if none of these are all available so you know even if you're not able to find uh, i mean it's fall time all the leaves are gone there are no fruits guess what you can just offer two drops of water to me that also is more than enough and i will take it and i'm very happy with what you did you know what you have offered to me so such a beautiful uh, thing here again the point about it is not about the actual offering or whatever i'm giving but it's the attitude in which uh, i'm giving so you know it's really the it's an idea of where i'm building a strong relationship with that lord itself and to build that strong rela relationship you know it requires an action but more importantly is the attitude you know like for example uh, swami chinananda gives this example of uh, a couple who is going to get married you know what happens in the beginning you know the uh, uh, the two people get married and uh, then there are so many festivals and everything that is built because it um, builds this attitude of buying a gift and giving but along with that attitude of giving the gift comes the attitude of loving the person you know you build that love and it is with that this attitude of gift is given you know it's not that oh i have to buy a gift and uh, take it to my wife or anything but it is it is about you know giving that with all the love which is needed and so just even giving a very very simple gift but with that gift when the act of love is there it goes an extremely long way and so that is the whole idea of uh, the, um, here and swami chinmayananda gives this beautiful example of you know how uh, this indian and american when they're having the food together this uh, indian guy you know who's used to eating with his hands when he sees the american taking the spoon and he thinks that you know the spoon is going to help him take the food inside and uh, he gets the spoon but it's not ultimately the spoon which is taking the food inside it's really how he is chewing the food right so so to all these gifts that uh, whether it's uh, this patram pushpam phalam toyam all the gift or anything anything that we offer is like that spoon you know it's only a conveyor of it's a conveyor to convey my devotion my bhakti towards that lord you know so in that sense that that gift serves that purpose but ultimately it's that bhavam which is there behind that gift which is more important so in this next shloka you know he says it's not just about what you offer but what you do you know so he says yat karoshi yadashnasi yat karoshi yadashnasi yajjuhoshi dadasi yat yajjuhoshi dadasi yat yat pashyasi kaun yat 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 tat yat tat yat tat what is it yat pash pashyasi kaun te ya tat kurushas tat kurushva madarpanam tat kurushva madarpanam so he says 
whatever you do, yat karoshi, whatever you do, and whatever you eat, yadashnasi, whatever you eat, yat juhoshi, whatever you offer in sacrifice or give to me, you know, give in charity, and yat yat tapasyasi, yat tapasyasi, whatever you practice as your tapas. Just do it as an offering to me. Again, just so beautiful because uh, really, you know, this helps a lot for all of us. And especially I look at it even with what I am doing, you know, uh, anything and everything without taking any ownership for it and just doing it as an offering, you know, that is a way to bring that aspect of worship in our daily life. I may not be sitting in front of the Lord or I may not be doing my pujas or anything, but in whatever I'm doing, let me just bring that attitude of divinizing my action, you know? So by, by doing this, my whole notion of my doership, you know, that I'm doing it. And the second thing is I'm enjoying it which are really the two major obstacles for liberation, those things get, you know, progressively diluted. And instead of saying that, you know, I did it, let me enjoy this. I you know I did this and therefore let me enjoy the fruit of this. In everything, if I just keep on saying that, no, it is Krishna through me is doing it. You know, I'm only a nimitta karana. And let Krishna get the results. Let, so pretty soon, you know, our own stress levels, our own worries, everything will really come down. And in some sense, this really is karma yoga in complete action, right? So, karma nevadi karaste ma paleshu kadachana, that shloka, this ties in so beautifully with that yat karoshi, yat dashnasi, yat juhoshi, yat tapasyasi. Everything, you know, is nothing but Krishna, it is only for you. And which then brings the last shloka in this series about how to worship, you know. So Krishna says, you know, we shall be completely free from our results of action. You know, our actions you know, essentially gives us all these results in this uh, form of whatever joy, whatever this I can get. Now, what, how can I, uh, what is the final best thing that I can do? He says, Shubha Shubha Palai Revam Shubha Shubha Palai Revam Moksha Se Karma Bandhanaihi Moksha Se Karma Bandhanaihi Sanyasa Yoga Yuktatma Sanyasa Yoga Yuktatma Vimukto Mamu Paishyasi Vimukto mamu paishyasi. So he says, from all the results, whatever shubha and ashubha, you shall be freed from complete bondage with your mind in yoga yukta, you know, where your mind is completely in me, you know, sannyasa is ready for renunciation, and you shall be liberated and you will come to me. So there is a beautiful. Uh, uh, analogy, you know. So there is this lady, uh, she goes to the Ganges, you know, and she meets all the Mahatmas there and she takes all the fruits and gives it to the Mahatmas. And then she tells the Mahatma, you know, even this, uh, I'm giving you these fruits, but please take away even this act of my giving. Whatever I'm going to get the result out of giving these fruits, please take that result also away from me. So that is the ultimate sense of giving, you know. So that is, and that way I'm completely freed from any bondage. So not only am I doing the charity for somebody, but take away even this aspect of the fact that I'm doing this charity. You know, ultimate aspect of so at that point so so that i'm totally freed from this bondage this bondage which is that i am doing it 
and I need the results of it. So it is the ultimate, really the yoga of renunciation. And Krishna is saying, just take this part of it. So these three uh, shlokas that we did today, they are really um, the highest form of how I can worship. I can worship by giving a gift, but even when I give a gift, what is the kind of attitude I have to have? The second shloka, which Yat Karoshi Yadashnasi, anything and everything I do, let it be completely Krishnarpanam. Krishnarpanam in the sense that it is only he who is acting through me. He is the one who is taking the results away from me. And then finally, the last one is even the act of getting the results of it, let me just give it back. So I don't keep anything with me. You know? So, next week, we'll get into this final, the last section about, of course, you know, what is the glory? What is, what, uh, in the last, so, uh, the, uh, what, what kind of, what is the glory of the Lord's worship? And uh, really about his equal treatment of all devotees. It doesn't matter how people come to him, how he accepts him. All that we will discuss. Okay. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramayaha, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kaschit dukkha bhagbhavet, Om Shanti 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 Om Purna Madaf Purna Midam Purna At Purna Mudachyate Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Let me just stop the live stream. There is two messages. Oh. Um, Jayshree, you wanted to say something? I'll unmute uh, one second. I will first 